Well, it's the start of our show. Now, my next guest has this new DVD. It's called Jimmy Tingle's American Dream. Please welcome Jimmy Tingle. show you have, man. Thank you. And Look we're happy folks. to have you here. How about it, everybody? Yeah. Give it yeah. Thank you so much. Now, we must talk about this because my dad yelled out, Jimmy Tingles for president. Yes, and thank your, you, Mr. Castro. Yeah, your most recent show uh, you've been putting on is about this, Jimmy yep. Tingle for Wonderful president. president. And what, what, are, what ideas did you have? Well, put it this way. First of all, thank you so much for your support. You are the only one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The name of my party was Humor for Humanity. Humor for Humanity. Humor in helping, humor in healing, humor and hope. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> and that's what they chant at my rally, Steve. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> so if you hear something tonight, ladies and gentlemen, that resonates in your soul and moves your spirit, let freedom ring. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, I had a lot of fun ideas. It was a great way to talk about politics and talk about ideas for different ways to fix the, help the country move forward mm -hmm. uh, in a funny way. So it was a lot of fun doing. I'm glad the election's over. To tell yeah. you the truth. <laughs> I really am because there was so there was a lot of negativity and a lot of animosity, you know. Mm -hmm. And there's so many positive things happening in the world, Steve. That, for example, Americans are living longer and healthier lives than ever before. Mm -hmm. They say that 60, 60 years old is the new 40. I love that. 80 is the new 60. I love that. 100 is the new 80. I love that. And the afterlife is the new assisted living. <laughs> <laughs> so we have that to look forward to. Well, my dad's happy you mentioned yep. that because he's 87 years old. How about no this, way everybody? Way to go, <laughs> Mr. Castro. <laughs> Thank you. Nice now, going. Uh, one thing I did notice is that you do have some clips up on Boston.com. Yeah. Uh, and now, is that comedy from your show, or what is that? Yeah, that's a, those are clips from the uh, Tingle for President show, live clips. I actually did it here at the Regent Theater. Mm -hmm. They were filmed. And uh, yeah, and we worked out a deal with Boston.com, and they wanted to put them on the website, so we said, sure. So we got about 20 or 30 clips up there. Mm -hmm. Well, fantastic. Yeah. Congratulations yeah. on that. Thank you very much. And I, and I wanted to mention this. Uh, as well, and that is you were on 60 Minutes 2 for a mm -hmm. couple of seasons. Right. Uh, you were like a political correspondent there? I did the Andy Rooney commentaries. Mm -hmm. Andy Rooney's on the Sunday night show, was on the Sunday night show. He did like a minute, two minute commentary at the end of the show. They started a 60 Minutes 2 on Wednesday nights and they had all their people except the Andy Rooney guy. Long story short, I sent them a tape, they liked the tape, and uh, I auditioned for the job and got the job. So for two seasons, I was doing those little one to two minute commentaries at the end of the show. Oh, congratulations well, on thank, that. Thank you very much. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And you know what's funny? My aunt is 93, Auntie Jones. She calls me up and goes, Jimmy, Jimmy, congratulations. I heard you're going to be the next Mickey Rooney. <laughs> <laughs> so, Auntie Joan, Andy Rooney, Andy Rooney. <laughs> uh, you know, something happened actually after the 60 Minute Show, and that is you took on this uh, Jimmy Tingle Theater. It was in Somerville. Yeah. You ran it for a couple of years. There was about 200 shows there. Yeah, we did five years. Mm -hmm. We did five years. I, I found a space in Somerville. I wanted to get back into live performing. I love doing television, mm -hmm. but I wanted to get back into live performing, one-person shows. That's what I really enjoy doing. And so the space was available in Davis Square, mm -hmm. and I took it over. Long story short, we ran it for five years. We did, you know, like you said, 200 shows. We mm -hmm. did a lot of different types of you know, theater, one-person shows. We had political events. We were all sorts of stuff, and that's where I did the stuff with David Frost from the from the uh, the the show in Britain. Mm -hmm. He came there, and we did a show there, and so we did a lot of interesting things there. And I made the film that the film you talked about in the beginning, The American Dream. It's about starting that theater. It's about starting your own business, and that's what you're doing, Steve. What you're doing is fantastic mm -hmm. here with your show. You're developing something that's yours mm -hmm. and that you believe in, and it's awesome. And you got dynamite support with all the staff and everybody helping you. That's how our theater was, you know. And so that's about that's what the American Dream is, or whatever country you're in. Britain. I mean, and I've been all over the world. I don't want to brag, but two years ago I was in Europe. And I just like to say. <laughs> Excellent country. <laughs> now, I, I must mention this because... So everybody has their own dreams no matter where you are in the world. Dreams are important. Uh, 
But when you were there at the theater and you yes. were doing your shows, I want yeah. to mention that you got two Best of Boston Awards, one yeah. for being a comedian and the other one for being a producer at that theater. How about that, everybody? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. This is like, this is your life. <laughs> now you know the theme. And then you were born. <laughs> how about it, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> Look how he came out of the, the womb. Speaking of this is my, your life, is uh, one moment yeah. in your career, which is amazing, which I didn't even know, we talked about it today. Mm -hmm. And that is, uh, you were on The Tonight Show yeah. in 1988, and you were there when Johnny Carson was the host. Yeah. You met him, and who else was on the show with you that night? M me, Johnny, and Bob Hope. <laughs> How about that, everybody? Bob, Bob Hope. I got to tell you, what a, what a, that was a real treat. It was uh, December uh, 1988. It was on there with Johnny and Bob Hope. It was, it was I can't even describe it, you know, because uh, it, was, it was a very special thing at the time. I mean, Comedy Central wasn't on the air. I don't even think HBO was on the air at the time. Mm -hmm. And so it was before that. So the only show really to do was that. Letterman had only been on the air a couple of years, so it was a very difficult show to get on. But Johnny had me on and gave me the okay after the show, so that was, that was very cool. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I, I always like to mention that, you know, it's tough because one of my heroes is Johnny Carson. Growing yeah. up, I watched him. Mine too, him, mine too. Uh, and, and it was great to see him entertain audiences nationally. Oh, yeah. And now that I've met you, I am one degree of separation from Johnny Carson. How about that, everybody? Yeah. Steve, Steve, yeah. Steve, touch me, touch yeah. me. I can feel it. You can I feel can Johnny. I'm going to channel Johnny Carson. <laughs> <laughs> Who is Ed McMahon? He's Ed McMahon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he tries to be. Uh, yes. We're working on it. <laughs> there you go. Doc Severinsen, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. <laughs> the band. You, you, yes. you mentioned that, but Doc is still alive and well playing music, and we've been trying to get him on the show. He lives yeah. down in Mexico. Really? So maybe if you have some strings, you can pull for us. Doc was great because I was so nervous. I was so nervous going on that show. I had a twitch in my eye a month before I went on. Mm -hmm. I would wake up in the middle of the night because I had this fear I was going to get on the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson, and they bring you through that curtain and I pull like a Ralph Cramden like I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> in front of the whole country but it didn't happen so yeah. sounds fortunate. like me every monologue of my show <laughs> yeah. no you put it out there man you got it out there you 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 do it right but I'm so I was they don't give you a monitor on the show mm -hmm. you know you just go out there and you're in front of you in front of the country you know mm -hmm. so it's it's pretty wild now, now you're one of the people that I definitely want to ask this and that is these late night shows that come from Los Angeles and New York, yeah. why hasn't there been one from Boston? We've got so many talented people here. Wait a second, ladies and gentlemen. Do we not have Steve Castro? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. Huh? Huh? Hollywood, Manhattan, Arlington, Massachusetts. Yeah! <laughs> well, we are the late night underground. We were thinking on the lines, along the lines of uh, NBC, CBS, Fox, ABC. You know, there's nothing uh, national that's come out of Boston yet. Do you yeah. know why? Uh, I, I don't off the, <laughs> off the top of my head, but WG, it's something to aspire to. Number one, WGBH, PBS does uh, original programming mm -hmm. from Boston. I don't know why there isn't. I don't know. It sounds like, I think with the technology that we have today, and you don't need, you know, huge fancy studios, you don't need movie sets to do things, I, I would think you that... You don't need a handsome host? <laughs> <laughs> I would think that there's opportunities for that. Well, we, we hope we can uh, eventually grow this into that. We're glad to have you here. I also want to mention that uh, years ago, mm -hmm. uh, we actually met earlier. Uh, you were putting together a promo video in Cambridge at the Cambridge uh, Cable Station, mm -hmm. and I actually was editing it for you. So we met. I was very young. Okay. And, uh, and I remember what a great guy you were, but I also remembered was the night we were working together, you got a phone call. It was Conan O'Brien's show, mm -hmm. and they wanted you to go down to New York and do the show. So I was very excited because I'm working with you, and here you are going to New York. Mm -hmm. Well, that night, I uh, put on the television. I saw Conan. He announced you, and I was excited. And at the end of the show, it's when the comedian comes on, he says, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry. We've run out of time. We can't have Jimmy Tingle on tonight, which is you know, very sad. Uh, but I was thinking about you because... When, when they run out of time like that, what yeah. do they do with you? Did you perform or did they say go home? Well, I, I didn't perform. They didn't exactly say go home. But, um, they had Ted Williams on the show. Mm -hmm. And Ted Williams was, you know, obviously a legend and a great baseball icon. So he went over another segment. Conan was having a great interview with them. They kept them an extra segment. Conan came backstage and said, Jimmy, he gave me, he gave me a T-shirt. He goes, we can't put you on. <laughs> but here's this great T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and I will put you on tomorrow night. So I, d I did it the next night. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. How about that, everybody? Yeah. yeah. Well. yeah.
I wasn't, uh, I wasn't smart enough to tune in the next night. I didn't know you actually had gotten on, but that's great to know. That was the first time I found out I had a bald spot. I'm home that neck, the next night. I'm watching myself on television, and I do my set, and I'm lying in bed with my wife, and, and I, I, take a, I do my set, and I take a bow, right? And all of a sudden, I see the bald, I go, honey, I got a bald spot. She goes, you didn't know that? I go, no, why didn't you tell me? Well, it's kind of a little embarrassing learning the first time yeah. you got a little bald spot on national television. Yeah. Well, the first time you see it, it's very shocking. <laughs> For me, it was just a few years ago. <laughs> By the way, they should have hit this, this with a little makeup, don't yeah. you think? Yeah. And why did I have to draw attention to it? You, you can visit Tony. I went to get a haircut from him yeah. once, and he told me to get the sheep injections. So that's <laughs> fine. And my barber, ladies and gentlemen, how about that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you also had an HBO special. Yes. When was that on? That was on uh, in the 90s, early mm -hmm. 90s, yeah. They used to do 10 comics a year. I did it with Bill Hicks. The year I did it was uh, Bill Hicks and Alan Havey and I think uh, a few other fo folks uh, I can't remember right now. But Bill was the, the kind of the most famous one, I mm -hmm. think, of that particular uh, year that we did it. And it was a half-hour HBO special. And it was, it was pretty cool because every once in a while they play it. And it's nice to see material that actually, a lot of it still makes sense, mm -hmm. believe it or not. Also, I remember uh, when I had a show many years ago when I was yeah. much younger, Wendy <laughs> Liebman, yeah. who was a comedian, had her show on Arlington's cable channel. And she just recently had a Showtime special. Yeah. So it's good to see you guys She's hilarious. doing national stuff. You've got to get funny. her on this show, I'm Steve. trying. Jimmy, can you, you help get, me? I, absolutely. <laughs> she is so funny and got a big heart. She comes here every year and does a show for the uh, community center. So mm -hmm. it should be great. I'll do anything I can to get her on the show. That would be great. How about that, everybody? He's going to help oh, us Yeah, yeah. I do have to mention that... Yeah. Uh, what you a got... nice audience you have. Yeah, well... Do you guys get paid to clap? Yeah. <laughs> if we had money, you, we'd pay will him, Will you Jimmy. come on the road with me? <laughs> I need a good audience, man. I'm getting... Look at this. Either they're unemployed or they're broke. <laughs> <laughs> No, they just know a good favor opportunity when there is one. I owe them all sooner or later. Uh, you got your master's degree from Harvard. You're one of the smartest people I know. How about that's, this, everybody? That's right. And look, you don't have to clap again, but if anybody has a question. <laughs> yeah, I went back to school. After we closed the theater, the, I ran the theater for five years. I got done with it. I wanted to do something different. I applied to the Kennedy School of Government at Harvard. I got accepted. I couldn't believe it. And, uh, I, uh, you know, I got in and I have to say going back to school after 40 years, 30 years, it was a little, I felt nervous, I felt really, I didn't know if I could do the work. First day of class, my mother drops me off, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm crying, Ma, don't go! <laughs> I'm walking around Harvard with my Big Bird lunch bag, you know. <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. And I was the only one, and I kind of, I felt I kind of stuck out a little bit. It was maybe self-conscious, but I was the only one in the Harvard Library reading the Boston Herald. And I gotta tell you, <laughs> And I gotta tell you, I love the Herald. I love the I love the big letters. <laughs> <laughs> you can see in Revere and read the Herald and Newton. I love that. <laughs> Jimmy. Yes, Steve. I got oh. a favor to ask you. All right. Oh, here we go. All right. I know for a fact that you are also a fan of our good friend Rex Trailer. Now Rex yes. yeah. is up to be uh, the cowboy of the Commonwealth, and we were hoping you would say to some people uh, through the television camera here uh, how to guide them to make sure that they call their representative and we get Rex to be the cowboy of the Commonwealth. How about this, everybody? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is a public service announcement from young Jim Tingle. <laughs> On behalf of Rex Trailer, please go to your computers, go to your phones now, and dial or Google mass.gov. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> mass.gov slash Rex Trailer. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and please ask your representatives for an official Rex Trailer. Do we want a Rex Trailer day? What are we asking like for? The Cowboy of the Commonwealth. Cowboy of the Commonwealth. I should have known that before I did the public service announcement. <laughs> But please, go to your phones, go to your iPhones, go to your computers, and ask your representatives, write letters, march on Congress, march on Washington. Make this happen, ladies and gentlemen. It's up to you to make it happen for Rex Trailer. <laughs> Any other a, favors? <laughs> I got another favor to ask. Okay. You. All right. Now, I noticed that you've been on the front page of Boston.com with all your clips, and why, 
We've been doing this show for four years, putting clips out, and I was hoping maybe you could put in a good word for us. No way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't put competition on the air. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Only tingles on Boston.com. <laughs> You gotta work your way up from Arlington Cable to Boston.com. <laughs> you gotta go Arlington Cable, Newton Cable, Cambridge Cable, <laughs> Lexington Cable, then Boston.com. Well, we got all but, those and Somerville. How about that, everybody? You got Somerville, too? <laughs> if you have Somerville, wait a second. You didn't say you had Somerville. <laughs> if you have Somerville, I will do everything I can do to get you on Boston.com. Right. <laughs> Providing they give Rex Trailer his own show. What are we asking for again? <laughs> What are we asking for? Cowboy of the Commonwealth. Cowboy of the Commonwealth. Yes. <laughs> but listen, we want to thank you so much for coming tonight. This is his new DVD, Jimmy Tingle's American Dream. You can find it on his website, jimmytingle.com. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it can, one more time. Can I just do a little plug? For Go ahead, plug, else? plug. All right. Facebook, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and just like all the other candidates who ran for president, I have no idea how any of this stuff works. All I know, Steve, is I got a tweet three months ago from a kid named Josh. Jimmy, this is Josh. I'm following you. I just want to say, Josh, if you're watching the show tonight, you're creeping me out. You really <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jimmy Tango! Thank you, sir. Thank you, my boy.